Hey everybody, uh, good morning. If everyone's having a good start to their day or wherever you happen to be in your day. Um, today's offering is um, one that you may be a little bit more just relaxed. Um, we, had a, we had a good chat, I think, in the last couple of days just about balance and, and finding balance in lots of different so finding balance and kind of our work and our relaxed space or, or um, wherever we are in our careers and our in our work with our homes, you know, with our family, there's there's only so much um, areas that we can be being pulled into. And um, and it's then yesterday was all kind of a little bit of about duality, duality within resilience and I think I was starting to understand a little bit yesterday um, why that was coming up so 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 much for myself is um, I've been working really hard the last little bit and, and I think I hit that proverbial wall yesterday um, just when and it'll be a fleeting moment when you go from a an idea of having everything and and you feel like you're all the balls up in the air and things are things are just you know maybe a little bit new or overwhelming or you know you have a lot on your plate but you, you feel like you've got it and then all of a sudden the balls the proverbial balls start to drop and you're, and you know it's that it's that concept when one drops it's kind of like you go to you go to grab that one and then three or four more drop as well and, and I feel in a little bit of a way um, that happened to me yesterday. So I'm in comfy mode today. Just meaning, what that means to me is I'm in the comfiest clothes I can find. I'm taking a lot off my plate today. Today's gonna be a day of self-care because it, I, in my experience, um, those signs when they start to drop, those proverbial balls, uh, that's just a, Usually it's a sign that I've, I've kind of gotten past my threshold of, of being able to accomplish things in a <laughs> in a logical order, meaning I yes, I can keep pushing myself, and I've done so in the past, and balls keep on dropping, and so I'm, I end up doing things over three, four, five, oh my goodness, it'd be embarrassing to say more than five times, but it's happened. And it's it's counterproductive. All of a sudden, you're not you're not moving necessarily forward. You're still doing a lot. You're still still in, you know, the hustle. You're still in the go 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 mode. But what you're actually accomplishing isn't isn't structure and 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 it isn't solid. Maybe not exactly what you're hoping. You're just trying at this point, just trying to struggle through it, and. That's a big warning bells for myself, at least. Um, big signs that, okay, and we've reached critical mass, or maybe a little bit past, but we've reached it. Here it is. This is the signs and symptoms of, for my patterns, um, meaning that I'm starting to feel, you know, my emotions and my energy is starting to be drained, and, and, and I'm allowing that to be so by others. I'm being really affected by the way others are kind of presenting themselves in my world. And, and as soon as I start to, to depend on others to make me feel good or, or depend on others to, to, you know, my expectations, let's say expectations, and in fact, that might be where today takes us, but the expectations end up being just one other thing that are, that are kind of feeling like, like the ball is dropping. And, when you start to use the words expectation, when you start to put expectations on others, there's one thing to have it on yourself and, and you have to be gentle with yourself, just, you know, hopefully like you are with others as well. But when you start to really put expectations on others and then they let you down because they have their lives and their pieces that they're putting together and, and that, is, that is kind of piling on to your sense of, um, I mean, it can take on a lot of different feels, but the root cause will be, or in my opinion, the root 
would be that you feel like you're failing. You're, you're failing. You're getting that niggle of, I've been doing a lot of work. I've been working on blah, 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 X, Y, and Z. And I, you get to this emotional standstill where, you know, roadblocks are coming up, which they will. We've talked about that. Um, and those roadblocks, instead of being, you know, with that clear mind of like, okay, here it is. I'm going to, you know, handle this in this way. And it, and it, it doesn't feel so overwhelming. You just kind of feel or go more from the feels on how you need to handle it to get yourself back to an equilibrium. Expectations will blow all of that out of the water. They will, they will, will kind of overshadow any feelings of gratefulness, any, sh any feelings of excitement, those feelings that propel you forward and will motivate you forward in a really wonderful way. Expectation will diminish and will ultimately switch that on its head. And, and it's really challenging to, especially for some, it's really challenging to expect another human being to do things exactly the way that you're hoping them to do or you know, whatever the case may be, it's this, it's a little bit of a toxic circle, um, where it's almost like you are doomed to fail, they are doomed to fail, nobody feels like they're succeeding, and, and it's, it's a, it's a, it's a piece, and, um, I hit that a little bit yesterday, so, um, you know, today is going to be also a little bit about, whew, okay, pulling my own expectations back in, really being able to communicate to the beautiful, wonderful people that are, are um, helping me to accomplish goals and aspirations and pieces that I am I am working every moment of the day to to bring into this world because I am so excited. Or yesterday it started to go from like yay and excitement and and those positive reinforcement pieces to what's the opposite of yay. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, and and that feeling just left me feeling so drained and so exhausted all day yesterday which I I um that that is that is that is it when I am exhausted drained when I feel like my head can't turn off when all of a sudden my digestive system and and that's a really big um uh, signal for me is is my I'm so quite very well tuned into my physical body. I've had all self or blah, 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 all sorts of health issues since I was really really young, and and those health issues over and over and over again have taught me that um, I need to listen to my my body because my body when it's going through a health crisis, it's it's giving me some really big signs on things that aren't working that I need to be letting go of. And yesterday, I just like clockwork, um, things started piling up, expectations, and those those energetic kind of hard feelings or, or just feelings that I was failing is really what it came down to. Um, immediately, my, my digestive stopped. I wasn't digesting my food. I wasn't feeling like eating the foods that I usually, usually crave. Um, and it's it's fascinating like I as much as it can sometimes be challenging in the moment what always overcomes some of my challenges is that I tap into my my just fascination with how intricate how in depth and how truly connected we are not only to ourselves to our physical body and to having the ability to really tune in and stop that that inevitable kind of emotional, mental, physical crash that, that, that occurs in, in everyone's life because it will occur in different ways for different reasons. Um, I, yeah, when we're listening to ourselves, when we're listening and being guided by what feels right, it gives us those warning or those, you know, gives the little warning, warning bells. And I even have noticed that, um, that being able to share teachings every day has just, it's just really allowed me to also tune into that in a different way. So I've really been, thank you to each and every one of you, but I've really been loving this process and, and I've also found that it can be helpful for others too. So 
we are all connected. We are so intricately connected. Our experiences, even though they are done with different, slightly different paint strokes or, or colors, you know, our stories at their root have lessons that I feel we all can really benefit from and we all can really um, connect to in one way or another. And, um, and I think struggle is where we also share a lot as say this in a way the struggle I think is something it's it's maybe going on a little bit of a pendulum swing at the moment because there is so much struggle and I feel that I I hear that like all my senses are attuned to that however being able to be in struggle and also being able to look at the light or look at the at the not so heavy aspects of it, meaning meaning allowing yourself to be like, yeah, I'm in it, acceptance. <laughs> um, here I am. What am I going to do about it? Some type of action, and then and then implementing those actions by asking for help, and and that's kind of all the things that I have set up for myself today, and even for right now is just okay. We're gonna go back to bed. <laughs> I'm going to sleep in, which I haven't done for quite some time, and I and I I love getting up early in the morning. It makes me just feel productive. It makes me feel it, it it energizes me in a way that I can't quite describe. I'm also a person that goes to bed ridiculously early. However, you know, self care for me today is I'm going to go back to bed after I you know do a little bit of breathing, a little bit of meditation. I connect to myself. Um, you know, I'm going to go into the day very low, if any expectations, there are still a few things that that need to get done or need to be accomplished in order for the people that I love and care about to feel supported and, and, and feel me offering, you know, gratitude for their support and all the things. So I'm going to be connecting with people in a really, you know, genuine way and, and, um, maybe offering a little bit of apologies. There is definitely <laughs> a little bit of stuff yesterday that I just like, okay, my, I'm, I, I'm, I'm agitated. And so sometimes our emotional states, you know, you just kind of like you get prickly and I was definitely a little bit prickly. So those, and I know probably watching, but those that, that I need to apologize for, like I, I'm, I want to take that responsibility and I want to make sure that I'm not hindering other people within their elements of their life, even though I'm directly connected to certain people and meaning that, that we share space on a regular basis, meaning that they're amazing friends and, and co-creators in what I'm doing. Um, there is never going to be, and, and this is something I think to be said within family dynamics as well. There's never going to be a, a time when, um, yes, it's okay to bring things to the light and it's okay to have arguments and discussions and to bring it all up, bring it forward. However, when you know that you've kind of pushed yourself beyond where your capacity of functioning at and your emotional state is starting to trigger not only yourself, but it's starting to ripple out to the other people in your life, those are really good signs to be like, whoa, okay, interesting. Look at my prickly energy. You know, I wasn't yesterday able to necessarily be as on top of it. I tried, <laughs> but I needed a good sleep. I needed, I needed this awareness. So being able to say not only your stories and you're like, okay, I see where I'm and what I'm going through, but also I see what I've been, you know, how my energy has affected others because it does. <sighs> that's going to be a beautiful thing to do. I actually, I, I, I have found within my teachings and I've found within students how often we resist. We'll do a whole bunch of action. We'll do a whole bunch of, of um, let's say, just tuning in or even apologizing to people that are strangers or people that we, that we barely know that we feel like maybe we might have um, come across in, a, in not the ideal way. And we'll save our we'll save our family members, we'll save the people that are closest to us at the very end. And and it's interesting to my mind how we do that or why we do that sometimes. 
um, because those beautiful people that support us in day in day out or you know just support us family members or friends that are just always there for us they're, yeah they're usually the ones that 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 get the real components so that, that when we're when we're having a bad day it's kind of like blah, 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 blah. so I'm giggling at myself because I want to change that pattern and I want to um, observe that there is a piece of me that that's like yeah I've got probably three people that I just want to reach out to and be like yes it was a little hard for me my apologies and you know today I plan on starting the day anew I'm going to take care of kind of some of my needs um, I won't be as available as I was hoping to be however after today I will plan on blah 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 so interesting very very interesting so with that all in mind it's okay to be stuck it's okay to feel like you're going um, you know in a place that is feeling a little sticky wherever that might be for you um, and and I've had chats about this before but I, I call it my cave I like I sometimes just need to go into my proverbial cave in whatever capacity usually there's delicious food involved and just I usually pull out you know sometimes all the things so sometimes I pull out my smudging sometimes I pull out my journal I get I get as airy fairy into it as I possibly or as I want sometimes I don't want any of that stuff <laughs> and I'll look at it and just be like bleh um, so anyway, allow your, your rhythm, allow your creative niches of diving into your, whatever it is, your cave, your cocoon, um, you know, for some people it's, it's, it's not, it's not bringing themselves inward. It's, oh, I need to get outward. And so that might be, you know, going out into a hike or going out and maybe even being around people like again that's just it's different than than my than my needs but i've i've seen and i've recognized that there's there's that, that aspect for some it's just doing something completely different or it's doing something with people they barely even know and and um and and that's beautiful that's a beautiful thing too i know connecting into nature and getting out in the garden is a beautiful stage it's just not my first stage <sighs> All our stages and intricacies, truly, it's it's a blessing. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, for this morning, we're gonna have a little bit of a of a quick little um, tune in and work with some breathing, because after yesterday, my breathing is just it's up here. It's not going anywhere else, and I can feel it, and I can feel how that breathing style just keeps me also keeps my emotions also up here and and of course when our emotions are up here it means it can't bring itself into our heart space can't bring itself into our gut doing things that feel good and and that you know are are, are, are right because you just know when my breathing is up here meaning it's up in my upper lungs and I'm breathing quite shallow I'm I'm not taking those breaths I'm all up in my head and and um, and the head energy or the head emotions are much more this is a perspective is much more you know agitated and and not able to feel like you're in a, in a safe space you feel much more kind of on the verge of fight flight or flee or even freeze and so um, breathing So, that being said, let's get our hands going. Just gonna take a moment. Getting into a comfortable space, laying down, or if you feel like sitting up, just crossing the legs or having the legs in split leg or straight out in front of you. We're going to open the hands. We're just going to allow those hands to rest on our body in some way. It can rest on your abdomen, your knees, maybe even be placed on the floor. 
And the very first thing that I encourage you to just witness is just notice where your breathing is kind of finding its dominant inhale and exhale. So try not to change it. It is sometimes a really nice tune in just to notice where the actual breath is in that moment. And then again, as soon as you notice, you will also, or I find it quite funny, as soon as I notice things in my body, then my body starts to shift and change it. Almost like it intuitively knows, oh, thank goodness you noticed this was happening because I, I didn't want to be holding that, but we've been holding that for a long time. So again, as soon as you notice things, it, it will automatically start to shift and that's okay too, that's a positive. But it's also, however, it's also a really lovely just piece to be noticing, okay, yeah, there's that, there's that upper lung breathing, you know, that doesn't necessarily work for me. It's not allowing me to get the amount of oxygen that not only my brain needs, but my entire body needs for hormonal health, for you know my physical health in general. It's 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 lacking, and when my body is lacking oxygen, everything else just tends to not be able to function at its optimal level. So now I'm beginning to consciously draw that breath and as I inhale I bring it down and I'm not only bringing it in, into my tummy I'm actually bringing it right into my root structure so into that lower lowest part of my of my chakra centers where I'm visualizing it coming all the way down into that root and I'm for myself visualizing um, this bright burgundy kind of color of red and and that red is kind of almost rounding itself into you know that that space where I'm sitting it's grounding itself and drawing itself down and into kind of I almost visualize kind of brown kind of really thin roots connecting my my physical form but connecting me into the rooted structure of the earth and again wherever you're sitting and whatever you're sitting that visualization of just bringing that breath so deep down into yourself and then allowing it to continue down even further breathing into and and kind of allowing again there's an allowing of this visualization that's the root structure is connecting me into the ground beneath me so i can visualize it connecting into the earth or into just you know the center of something, something that feels really solid, really, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's building that foundation of safety and security. I tend to, when I'm working on really expanding my breathing, I tend to also really focus on a full exhale. So I'll exhale, I'll hold with that exhale a little bit, which I'm doing right now, and then I'll exhale just a little bit more. And that automatically creates this vacuum that needs to be filled. And it in, on that next inhale, it just really expands and takes in that oxygen in a slightly different way. So see if that resonates and see if you can practice that a couple of times. And right now, there's no right or wrong in the breathing. You can in and out to the nose actually more than anything you just want to really get creative with the breath itself the visualization is actually more our, our, our solidifying component you're utilizing that breath and you're bringing it into the body it's not in the upper part of the body it's not even in the lungs it's you're you're bringing that breath into your root chakra that, that red chakra, that grounding chakra that symbolizes and represents where you feel yourself. There is your root, your power, your, your ability to search out, to really know what's happening and, and to feel 
you know, it goes up and through the chakra systems, but right here is just this, this inner power that connects you down to the earth or connects and creates that solidity. So when you take a forward step, you know that that mind isn't, isn't kind of putting its own unique emotional stories or its own unique, unique stories and implementing it into your emotions and guiding you along that path that isn't necessarily always the most, you know, the path that's, that's for your highest good. It's there to keep you, you know, that mind is there to necessarily kind of keep you small, but it's, it's not necessarily always for your highest good. So when we connect to that root chakra, when we visualize, you know, the colors and, you know, we get, we get into that space. So for what I was talking about earlier, going into the cave, that's a, that's an area that you're kind of cocooning, you're kind of going into that cave or for others that's digging your hands deep into the earth, you know, working in the garden, getting a good sweat on, um, for others still that might be, you know, getting out and just doing something, not, not necessarily having to talk about it, but just doing and, and maybe going for a hike or doing something with a group of people, those can all be allowing ourselves to replenish that root chakra. And when that root chakra is starting to feel filled in whatever way we need to fill it, then it can start to enhance and then it can start to bring itself up through the chakra systems and allowing us, once all our chakras is being aligned again, ah, then, then it, it aligns us with our true nature, with our true kind of passions and, and, and the trajectory that, that really is where we need to be going. Maybe not always where we want to go, because again, we'll be going off the path and coming back to the path, but that's, that's all part of the cycle and the rhythm of so as we breathe, we're just breathing deep down into that root chakra, breathing deep down and finding that solidity, wherever and however that feels like for you in this moment. And if you're in a moment where you're feeling really good and everything feels really solid, it's always interesting just to tune your breath in and see how it's doing in your physical form. Where is it, where is it creating itself? Where is it, where is it holding space? And we always have the opportunity to breathe just a little bit deeper. There's always that opportunity, which is nice because that, that also represents that there's always opportunity for us to grow, to expand, to lean into something that might feel different or slightly uncomfortable, but yet we know is something that needs to be done or said or accomplished or are really beautiful pieces by the way wonderful ways of restructuring your breathing patterns myself just recognizing might have been clenching my jaw a little bit last night so I'm just going to do a little bit of self care for that jaw you know there's some beautiful incredible pressure points so if you suffer from TMJ or if you just notice that sometimes your jaws get quite tight if you if you can kind of feel along and find your cheekbones and that those cheekbones ultimately will connect to the jaw. So it kind of goes back towards the ear. And if you just kind of palpitate with your fingers, you'll notice, first of all, first little pressure point right in that nodule. So that kind of connecting point between where our cheekbones and our jaw connect. And you go ever so slightly inward. And there's this little beautiful little nodule that one, maybe even two of your fingers can fit in. And if you just put some pressure there, that can really help to create a release in that TMJ, create some release in the jaw. 
not forgetting to breathe because sometimes there can definitely be some pain spots. You know that you've got the right spots when it's like, ooh, activates it. And then the second one is actually just slightly down from there. So you're going to just continue to walk your fingers. And it's it, for a lot of us, our faces are different, but they have the structural components of the same. So if you go almost, almost straight down, you'll feel when you open and close your jaw, there's this other little nodule that's right in here. And once again, it's when you activate it, it can feel quite for lack of a better way of describing it, it can feel quite painful, but that is another beautiful P and J point. And you can just kind of push kind of inward and slightly up into the activation point. And it's okay if you don't find it, what you can do instead is just kind of massage around the area and you will be hitting those points and creating that release. So I'm just kind of noticing that my jaw is really tight. And if, if you're noticing that yours might be, again, if we don't tune in, we won't notice and then we'll keep on clenching our jaw and it gets worse and worse. So it's really quite lovely and doesn't take very long to activate those pressure points. And then all of a sudden our jaw just begins to act to like, it begins to release and it begins to create some space there. And that also helps with our lymphatic drainage points too. So when our jaw is tight, it puts pressure into the back of the skull, puts pressure into the muscles in the neck, which prevents our lymphatic from draining. And it also prevents our cerebral fluid from going up and into the brain. It can create tension headaches. It can create all sorts of interesting components, pressure behind the eyes, um, in the temple and up and into the frontal cortex. So doing these pressure points on top of many, many others can be just such a valuable um, gift to give to yourself if you're feeling that need. And already my jaw is, yeah, it's feeling much better. So, but you need to notice if it's tight first. A lot of the time we aren't always tuning into our physical form as much. And so then we miss those opportunities to just give ourselves a little bit of, a little bit of massage the breathing, space the breathing. So wherever you are, and today was a little bit of breathing, but more just tuning in. However, breathing, doing a little bit of self-care and just allowing whatever you need to do for yourself today um, whether that is if you're in a go-go mission today, beautiful, I applaud you and I say thank you and, and keep going, make sure you're listening and tuning into yourself regularly. If you're also going through a time or a challenge and you're feeling like myself, where you're just needing that, that day, you're needing that day to regroup. And if you can take that day, great. If today's maybe not the ideal day, See if you can take little moments throughout the day where you just have that opportunity to regroup and, and whether it's listening to this video or listening to another um, form of, of, you know, gentle relaxation or, or even going into an actual guided meditation. Um, there's, there's lots that I have available. Um, it's just something that you can kind of tune in throughout the day, give yourself those little pockets of time for self. That is, that is doable. Five full minutes is doable. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here, holding space as I'm in a little bit of a struggle and as I'm in a little bit of a tight spot today. Um, it's, it's all the things and that's okay. <laughs> so thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy wherever you are.